a big guy during that time that came into my life and gave me that gave me the uh, confidence in what I was doing was Post Malone. He, you know, we had, we had shared uh, we shared like producers. The producer that I found and got signed and brought out became his producer. We started frequenting the studio and seeing each other a lot. Became buddies, good buddies. And he, you know, there was a there was a moment in time where I was really I was I was going to sign with him and sign to him. Um, Business wise, it's just. It just wasn't right for me, you know, mm-hmm. but it didn't really go there. But what I will say is he he gave me a lot of confidence at that time in what I was working on because no one in the public had heard it. Mm-hmm. And it was this kind of new sound. I, I don't even know what you would call the genre of music that I'm making. It's, it's definitely not like rap. It's not country, but it's kind of taking the ambiance of some country music, yeah. and, you know, but it's... I was, I hadn't really shared it with anyone. I knew it was good. I knew I liked it. My buddies liked it. And that's really the gauge for me, but... Someone at that stature kind of going on record with me and saying, hey, like, I really fuck with this. That really helped, like, personally. And I've, I've told him that, you know, and uh, just kind of getting over the hump of, like, yeah, this is exactly what it's supposed to be, you know? So, You're probably nervous getting over that, like, leaving the hip-hop, what everybody thought of you as. Yeah, okay, and, you know, like, I'm going to be candid, you know? Like, there, there was definitely a time where I felt like I was, you know, I was taking steps backwards. Like, I... I was in these nice, like I said, grandiose studios with great producers and, you know, like the whole, I was, I was the guy, you know, and then I'm back in my room, in my house, working alone, trying to figure out, looking, Googling how to fucking do shortcuts on Pro Tools, trying to figure out how to do it myself. And it was like a gut check time, you know, mm-hmm. but it, like kind of what life is about, man. You know, like I, I really I felt when I look back at that time, like, man, I, I like kind of became who I am now became a man because I was like, you know, I was kind of back against the wall. And I feel like those are the times where you really, you kind of figure out who you are, mm-hmm. you know? And, and that's what this was for me. Like, you know, it was, it was kind of a, it was a, a double down on yourself type situation. And most Which people, scary. yeah, it's most scary people frowned upon it. Not my immediate friends. Cause they got it. Mm-hmm. Like, well, they might've just not said it to you. No, they would. They would. That's why they're here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Good. Like, that's my good. guys would tell me, any, like, I wouldn't it's not that shit. situation. You would have said a thing? I wouldn't have said shit. I was that's trying to get, call you I was trying to get picked up. Yeah, I was trying to get picked up. It was on fire. <laughs> hey, man, I love it. I love every single one. <laughs> yeah, no, but, like, I had plenty of people be like, I don't know, man. Like, Mike says, you're still doing good, making, make, like, it was still, it was, like, even my, my money guys, my financial guys or lawyers were like, this is, a, this is a sustainable business. It's growing still. It's in increments and small, but, like, they don't get it. Like I knew for a fact, this is the, this is a long winded answer, but this is really the answer. I know for a fact being in LA and being in the game and I was paying attention to like, I had one manager at the time who came on, who's very much an in person in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I know what the stigma attached to Mike Stud was. Oh, that's that like college rapper kind of like douchey, you know, Mm -hmm. like that was cool. I fuck with that dude. Yeah. But like, it was that, like there was a very low ceiling to what it could be. And, you know, additionally, I'm just changing as a person, as a human being. And I just, I, I don't even feel connected to Mike Stud anymore mm-hmm. as a man. You know, I became from a fucking boy to a man. Like, I, I was a fucking kid when I did that, you know? Yeah. So all of those factors combined made it, I literally couldn't continue as is. So then it became, what's it going to be, Mike? You know, and then the records, you know, I, I knew I, I knew the records were cool, you know, so I just kind of, we, we started to roll it out. We made a plan for the top of 2020. It was supposed to do a deal with Post. I've actually never really said that. I've, people know, some people yeah. know, um, some of my fans know, but the pandemic comes around 2020 and like, I'm supposed to go out on tour with him. He's not touring, you know, so yeah. it kind of made this, it kind of almost forced the hand, like, I'm just going to do this rebrand myself and we can we can reconvene that's on that idea when you later. say it didn't align from a business standpoint that's what that's what it was yeah because it was like kind of the contingency and like the most appealing thing to me was like getting out like the opportunity i'm giving skis right mm. justin bieber did that for post like post had a few records out bieber put him out he's just singing singing to arenas full of people you know yeah, post kill him. um and post is just a an outlier talent anyway like he didn't need justin bieber to do it justin bieber just saw what he was out of the gate put him in the audience and said, said fuck let's go you know yeah but that was kind of the idea like the biggest thing i needed from him yes we have some songs together too now getting them out is another thing being an independent artist and him being one of the biggest pop artists in the world but we have one incredible record that i think if, if i could get out it would be my first true hit you know so that's still <laughs> on deck you know but 
yeah, like the pandemic kind of forced a hand and I really thank God that it didn't happen the way it did because, mm -hmm. you know, we're just, we're having such a good time running the business and doing it the way we are. And now that the numbers have grown, when you have the ownership, like there's a lot of cool things happening and, and it can be really lucrative in a way where I, I'm not necessarily having to get exponentially more famous to make exponentially more money. Yeah. I'd rather have less fame, way less fame. The fame is the least cool part for me. I'd rather be sustainable, you know, be doing really well, taking care of my family and friends, but not necessarily having to fucking jump through hoops, you know? Yeah, well, that, that, whole, uh, that whole question of what would you rather have, fame or money, it's kind of, a, it's a difficult question at times. Mm -hmm. you, you, the first thought is, is money. Mm -hmm. But with fame, you can monetize that to make it money. True. You know what I'm saying? Fame, fame in turn can be money. And that's really when we talk about the record label paradigm, that's what they're doing. That's the commodity exchange. We're going to make you so much more popular and notable. Your notoriety, your namesake will go, the value will go so high that everything you do becomes money. Yeah. Hey, show up here, get 20 grand. Hey, Hey, hold this thing in your fucking Instagram post. You guys know the game, you know? Like everything becomes money as your notoriety goes up. Right. For me, I'm just not that type of dude. I, I don't really fucking I'm not I'm not mad if you come up and say hello. I'll be the guy to talk to you all day, you know? But hey, how are you? I'm not uh, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? What's up? I'm gonna what give you a hey, how are you back, you know? Yeah. But I don't really necessarily <laughs> want to do a bunch of bullshit. I don't really I don't care about attention or fame at all, really. I and and actually if I take inventory of how I feel, I don't, I don't even really feel comfortable. You know, like it's not what gets my rocks off, you know? I love going out on stage. That's different. Yeah. You know, like there's a connection there. These fans are there for me. They've been fucking supporting me. I made this music. They connect with it. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, that's different. But I'm talking about going on this talk show and doing this, you know, and doing that. Like, it's just not, it's not what it is for me. Right. You know, it's not what it's about for me. Boys. Yeah, no I'll question. This is Bust huge. The boys. Yeah, this is probably right making more famous than anything. This, we have massive <laughs> numbers now. I'm going mainstream after this. Yeah, there's no question. Yeah, yeah, you With, been, uh, go ahead, my Oh, fault. sorry. I wanted to ask that one question about you and Post having an album together. You don't have to talk about like the necessary hoops you have to jump through, but like what are hoops that you have to jump through when you're an independent artist with the biggest pop star in the world? Like how, do, like, yeah. for me, I'm like, fuck, I'd love to hear that. Yeah. Like, that's awesome. I love Post, love you. Like, why wouldn't that be the greatest thing ever? Yeah, just the business of it is essentially like when you sign a record deal, they, they more or less own your voice mm -hmm. to a certain extent. So everything's just like, you know, if I'm an independent artist, I have to hop in bed and do business with the record label to put those songs out. Now yeah. I'm willing to, you know? Yeah. So I'm willing to, but these record labels have huge rosters with huge schedules and Post is their biggest cash cow. They're working on his album. You know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of, uh, I'm more, what's good is I have, the only reason this even happened is because we're buddies. So Post is, has a strong enough voice to say, fuck it, we're doing this. You yeah. know what I mean? So that, that's what I'm, that's really what I'm going to need for it to see the light of day. And if it doesn't come out, you guys know Post didn't do that, so go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on Post. We'll have him on. I'll call him right after this. Let him know. <laughs> um, but no, man, he's like the best guy ever. Really, like we had, it was a moment in time. He was becoming very, very famous. He was a neighbor of mine in Los Angeles. I mean, we spent so much fucking time together and it was, just had a, had a great experience. And, and then we made some, a lot of great songs together, you know, a handful awesome. of great songs together. So to answer your question, it's kind of up in the, it's up in the air. It's all on Post. Yeah, it's all in post. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys like this clip. If you want to continue to be for the boys, you need to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share with a friend, and check out our playlist. We have all the links right here on the screen. As always, biggest of hugs and tiniest of kisses. Also, go check out the full episodes, but always for the boys.